Okay, here we go. Mandalorian season three. Finally watched the finale. I know it's Wednesday, but it, I think it came out last night. People were telling me. So we finally got to watch it. And I thought we'd we just do like kind of a recap of season three and see what we thought. So let me bring in uh some of my guests here. Here's my first guest. The red guy. Yo. I guess I'm kind of breaking breaking character. Never talk, but what's good? Yeah. Glad to be back. I usually refer to these guys as Crayola. Yeah. <laughs> like crayon colored. I'm so confused. Are they are they actual people or are they robots? Uh I think they're actual people. I think they're like like they're not force users, but they're highly trained. Um I don't know how you describe them. You know, they, they appear in uh Return of the Jedi, then the they last appear Jedi. In, the, in the sequels. You know, protecting uh, Snoke, and you yeah. really don't get um, you I, you really don't get a background on them unless you read the books, I guess, or the comics or the whatever. You really got to get into the uh, the lore of Star Wars, which I have not. So I don't know how I would describe them. Yeah, I'll be. We just kind of, I guess, you know, kick butt. But yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not. I don't think they're Force users though, because you never see them using the Force, and they don't get lightsabers and you'd have to be because the sith have to like get the lightsaber from a jedi and then they they crack the crystal and make it bleed and that's what turns their lightsabers red so they don't um yeah they don't they don't do that so they're just i don't know red ninjas i don't know what we call the guys the red guys all right so we're waiting for the momer to to join in here but we can just kind of like get an overview. Like what was your feeling on season three of the Mandalorian? Um, So I, I get that the Mandalorian is a ser- serialized show. We're like, not like not every necessarily has to build off the last one. Like that's kind of the way it's been since season one. Like all the different episodes have their own little, like little mini antag- antagonist, their own little mini adventure, their own little thing. But with this season, it really felt like they were doing that like, too much like that was like too overboard like that style of making a show like at least with the first two seasons first two seasons i felt like there was an overarching theme an overarching story like mandalorian and grogu like they're like developing as characters and we're arching antagonist and we're working towards a goal that's been established early in the season and with this season i'll say that i didn't, I didn't see any really the mandalorian story is um pretty stagnant throughout the whole thing i guess with grogu he officially becomes an apprentice but what does that mean he's just doing the same thing that he's been doing since the beginning of the, the beginning of the uh the season and um they didn't establish that moff gideon was going to be the antagonist and like he's been doing stuff until the the, the last episode before the, the the finale and um i just thought that this show was a this season was a real letdown for me like i was not invested i kept watching just because i was I was hoping, I had hope, but um, I felt very let down. And I think that they um, are not taking the Mandalorian in a in a Din Djarin, I should say, I should say, good direction. And I feel like it's really started to stagnate. Oh, I would agree with that. I, I felt like, and I think I said after the previous episode, like it seemed like they had a, an idea, a decent idea of they're going to go reclaim Mandalore and they get there and the Empire's hiding out there. And now they got to route them out. But this whole plot point, this whole arc of the third season could have been done in a in a two hour movie. Yeah. And all everything else was just fluff. So I, I did a quick PowerPoint so we can look at like some of the characters that uh, they introduced us to in season three. And um, so here first we got. Um, I'll start with the good characters, the good characters they did introduce us to. So we have this Jedi who he's the one who saved Grogu, if I'm remembering correctly from that episode. He did a flashback to Order 66. Right, right. For... Well, your uh, microphone, I don't know if it's the internet connection now, but you're like... Can you hear me? Yeah, you're hiccuping though. Like it's like sometimes your your words come in twice. Huh. Like it's, I don't know, it's weird. Um yeah, so this guy, they they went back and, and showed you what happened during Order 66 and how Grogu escaped the uh, the destruction of the Jedi. And we had 
um, Warlock from Top Gun Maverick. All right. Remember this guy? Yeah, he's awesome. I love Charles Parnell. Um, he's one of the uh, – what are these guys called? Are they the Night Owls? Yeah, I think so. They're like the they're older like- Mandalorians who are hanging out still on Mandalore and – and joining up with them, he was kind of cool. And this is the last of the good characters, and he only gets in here because it's Doc Brown from from Back to the Future. Yeah, that's the only reason I put him in because the episode he was in was hot garbage. But every time I see Christopher Lloyd in something, I'm just waiting for him to start going, Marty, Marty, we've got to get back to the future. <laughs> Doc Brown and. I remember him from when I was a little kid. They used to have a TV show on called Taxi. And he played this guy, Jim Ignatowski. And uh, he was the mechanic and he was kind of spacey. And every time I see Christopher Lloyd in something, I'm always expecting the, ah, okie doke, boss. Huh. Whatever you want. That's all I hear when I hear this guy's voice. And I love it. It's just because it's, it's such a pleasant memory. I mean, he even played, um, he even played a Klingon captain. In Star Trek Three, the search for Spock, and <laughs> battle with the Klingons, and the whole beginning of the movie, he's just speaking Klingon and subtitled. But when he meets up with Kirk and them on the planet, and he's in English, it just—I'm like, it's Jim Ignatowski. <laughs> Kirk, <laughs> you don't want to give me the Genesis device? Okie dokie. <laughs> so I love this guy. So he's been in Star Trek and Star Wars now. Yeah, he's really crossing over. That's pretty crazy. And sometimes he plays a good guy. Sometimes he plays a bad guy. This is the, he's a very he's a very good actor. I really have enjoyed his career for a long time. All right, now we get to the bad. There's a lot of bad. Um, I don't remember what this dude's name is. I don't remember what the point of him. Oh being yeah, oh, yeah. That the former Empire doctor, and he's trying to restart his. Was he yeah. Doing no, yeah. This was really strange because I thought they were, they were gonna like add something to it, something to it, thrown away at the end of the season. Like, oh yeah, he's not. He's not here anymore. Like they literally could have just said that he's not here anymore because he's part of the Republic. We didn't have to spend the whole episode, episode, whatever, like with him. Was it one episode or two episodes? Oh, I can't remember. That's it how felt like an eternity, eternity with them. His character was like, and this this plot line, like it went nowhere for me. And I was like, I was ready to stop watching the season after this. Like, what are we wasting our time for with this guy? And of course, if you're going to waste your time. This guy talking about how and doesn't he kind of look like um in this picture though, doesn't he kind of look like uh Hugo Strange from Batman? He does, yeah. I know who you are, Batman. Ugh. You're Bruce Wayne. So this guy was a waste of time. That means this girl was a waste of time. I, like, she came up in another episode, but like I didn't care yeah. about her either. Yeah. She's a double, I don't know. Who knows? Like that was a waste of time. And then this guy. This pirate dude that looks like he just woke up in a forest somewhere and he's got like moss boogers and weird red eyes. And like <laughs> he's a plant thing, but what is he? He eats meat because look at these teeth. These yeah, are not yeah. grinding teeth in the front, they're incisors. Huh. Like, what was the point of this guy? He's a pirate. It was like so they had an antagonist so the Mandalorians could go band together and fight him, I guess. I mean, yes. I mean, that was kind of cool. This but- part. This was the start of the feeling I got that season three was nothing more than a live action video game. Uh, Even this last episode where it's like, I'm going to take out these guys, you know, and they're all behind shield walls and there's two at a time and take down the first shield. And he goes in and he easily beats those two guys. And it's like, okay, now take down the second shield. And then the next two guys are slightly better equipped. They got right. those weird tonfas with the energy things at the end and then the next one they got shields and the next one and then you get to moff gideon who's got a best car suit on it's like you're getting just going up a level until you get to the boss fight yeah that's how i viewed the whole season just a, a video game very light on story all There's right barely any you story know, you know what the next character is it's getting worse i'm getting worse and worse as i go along is it one of the mandalorians no. Jack Black. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. First, we bring back Hux. Yeah, for like one. For, for like, like one, one episode. Or two and if you watch the sequels, you know they totally wasted this character and gave him a bogus cop out ending, you know, where he betrays them because he's mad at 
he, he's mad at uh, Kylo Ren. So he betrays the whole empire, this thing he's grown up in and served his whole life just because Kylo Ren, what, you know, smacked him around in front of everybody and dragged him along the floor? Yeah. He betrays everybody? No, no it, was, it was dumb. And they bring him back for one episode. Yeah, and then we got Lizzo and the most egregious one of all, Jack Black. Talk about being miscast. Like, this is not a vehicle for Jack Black. Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, he kind of just was Jack was Jack Black in the Mandalorian, but I love Jack Black, so I didn't mind it, but it was kind of silly. He just didn't fit. I mean, I like Jack Black too, but he does not and the way he acted it, it's just not it's not Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. It's like going to an expensive dinner and one of the courses is like um a bowl of lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> you start off with a you start off with some uh, escargot and then a nice light salad. And then you just get Lucky Charms before you get your beef bourguignon. Yeah, it's like, what? This does not belong here. Yeah, it's I very... like Lucky Charms. They're good yeah, in another yeah. venue. He hammed it up. He definitely definitely hammed it up for maybe a little bit too much. And with his beard and that, he looks like he should be playing like a younger Santa Claus or something. I don't know. He just didn't fit. It just didn't fit with me, this one. So, no. yeah, I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't thrilled with this. Oh, wait, we got our guest. We have our other guest here. Dun, dun, dun. The Mommerer. The Mommerer. You were kind of kicking butt in this episode. Oh. Oh, Mommerer, is your microphone on? Is your microphone on? Barely. I can, no, I can I hear so. you from up here. Here we go. Here we go. That's better. Nope, I can't hear you. <laughs> Mama is having mic problems. Red guy, hold the fort for me. I'll be right back. Okay, so listen, I'm I'm thinking the season, and and um one thing that is really bugging me is I guess this is also we we can talk with uh, the Grand Learn and the Mama, but there's the clones. There's the they kind of set it up so the way that Moff Gideon's base works is you have the shield. The, the, the multiple shields with the different guys, the different guys that guard section. Then you have the clones, and then you have Moff Gideon's like chair room where he just kind of chills and he bees evil and he broods, he broods and looks at his little thing where he can see where anybody is in the base. Why didn't he have his final stand back in the clone rooms? If he was so like, oh no, my clones, you killed them, you killed them, my clones. Why didn't you just have your final stand where the clones were instead of like having them two more rooms back? Like, I don't get why you did that. Yeah, like, why wasn't it the like, most protected area in the whole base? Yeah. And, like, why didn't you just, like, have your final stand, like, in the clone the clone room, or preferably the, the shield room? Like, you could have been chilling in the shield room. You could have had all your Inquisitor or your um, Praetorian guards or whatever, and you in the shield room, and just, like, knock the Mandalorian off or whatever, or whatever. And, like, just done something rather than just, like, been like, okay, yeah, you can kill these guys. You can kill all my clones. Just do it. It's dumb. I love how you just like hit something on a panel and they all just start blowing up all the containers. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. But you know that was pretty dumb is probably the going to be the title of this era of Disney, Star Wars and Marvel. Like the, everything that's coming out lately, it's like She Hulk. Well, that was dumb. Uh, you know, Mandalorian season three. Well, that was dumb. Star Wars. You know, they're going to do another Ray movie now. That's dumb. Ant Man um, and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. That was dumb. I'm hoping Guardians in uh, what two weeks? I vote for Guardians. Two weeks. I'm hoping that's good. But what else do we have to hang our hats on? And they pulled Shazam out of the theaters after less than three weeks because it was bombing. That's not Disney, but I know it's not Disney. But I'm like, just what is going on with movies? I I need to go see um, Super Mario Brothers now. We need to go on and talk about that because. That looks like that's on course to hit like a billion dollars. Oh, so much fun. It's like a fun movie. People are really enjoying that movie. So I, I, I think I need to see that this weekend. Yeah, and I was like, Chris Pratt did a good job as Mario. But Mom, I, I, but... I don't think that movie is going to be up your alley. No, I don't think so either. Well, what they're saying about it is it's really good for young kids because they like the flashy, fun animation styles and all that. And it's good for like people like me, middle-aged gamers, that played those games when we were younger. I played, you know, Donkey Kong and 
and uh, versus Super Mario Brothers and, and games like that. So I'm, I'm like, I'm probably going to catch. I'm assuming there's a lot of references to those old games. Oh yeah. So it'll it'll catch it for me. But um, the, why are like, you know, movies like that or Puss in Boots: The Last Wish able to be so successful, connect with young and old audiences alike, and Disney is just floundering and flopping around? throwing garbage out there yeah i don't know it's it's sad it's really sad i think at this this point it's like these movies have to fail before we can start getting good movies again like this is such a huge billion dollar industry all these superhero star wars star wars franchises that they need to burn they need to crash and burn in a big dumpster fire before like the new rebirth can grow and I, i think that's happening right now i think it's these are starting to crash and burn. And that's when it's time for us to swoop in and take over. We've got to prepare a resume. <laughs> tell them, yeah. this is the direction I would take Star Wars in. This is the direction I would take Marvel in. Listen, I'm point oh 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 one percent of your company. I have like two stocks yeah. here. So, <laughs> so I have a right to say, speak my piece. Yeah, but don't you think that's what it's got to take? It's got to take new vision. It's got to take a new way of thinking and being. And I think what Disney got into was let me preach to you rather than let me entertain you. And I think what people want is they want to be entertained. They don't want to be, um, they don't want to be, they don't want to be like, um, I think there's like the imagination was lost a couple of years ago. And you see that we talked about this the other night whereby there's nothing really new they're either stealing from old ideas or they're everything now is what a live performance, even when it should be, should not yeah. be. Yeah. And, yeah, I and think just like, forgotten. I think they've forgotten that when we go to movies or we go to sporting events, we're trying to forget about the horrors of life. Yeah. You know, the bad things that are going on in society, the bad things that are going on in the world. And we want to escape. And then you go to the movies and it's like, preach at you, preach at you, preach at you. You go to a sporting event and it's like, oh, before the game, let's just uh, remind you how awful you are. It's like, uh, thanks. You know, I was trying to get away from that. But you know, now that I'm here, why don't you just like tell me how horrible everything is? And now I've, I leave even more depressed than when I came in. I, I just want to be entertained. I want to forget about life. I want to put my brain on cruise control. If it's that kind of movie, I mean, if it's a if it's a movie where I got to think about like what's going on in in um, uh, like Tenet or you know something like that, like that's fine. But I, I don't want to be thinking about you know like really horrible things when I'm trying to just decompress for two hours. And well, I think there's one thing that I always think about when I go to Disney World, and I you know you got to go back to the founder, right? So the big, beautiful tomorrow. It's a big, you know, people want to think that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And the other thing is, remember when we were walking around, the big thing was you never feel like the outside world is there. You feel like you're just enmeshed in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place that has potential. And I I think, you know, I resonate with that, that you got to get away from things. You don't want like uh, things that you're that are bringing you down to like creep in and then you got to have inspiration and I think Walt Disney got that because um, he lived a really tough life and so I think they got to get back to that I think they're just they're nah, they're just doing some some stuff that's just dumb isn't that what you said it's going to be called the dumb the dumb <laughs> everything's yeah. dumb now yeah dumb, I think dumb, this dumb, is what dumb. I'll say about that um, I mean, obviously, Disney is taking all these safe, these safe bets. They make a ton of money. Like they're remaking every single one of their animated movies from, you know, the '60s all the way up to up to like 2010s. Now, they are, you know, making these Star Wars movies or whatever, and Star Wars TV shows with little to no effort. They're making the Marvel movies really serialized and just like and just like. All. I think what um really pisses me off about it is. You're Disney. You're the biggest company in the entire world. World, you can get any creative people that you want to come come in and work for you because it's such a big company and it's such a like big opportunity. And like, there's so many creative people out there in the world. There's so many of them, and you know, there's these people have ideas, 
and they can bring things to the table and they're well read on like all these big prop big prop you know cities and big franchises that they can like bring their own unique twist while still being faithful to the, the franchise and they can make stories that are that are worth and have interesting things and and um you know and it can be loved and can be really interesting but like disney doesn't want to take that chance and a lot of these big companies don't want to take that chance because it's so profit heavy so i yeah. can't excuse any of these like actions where you're making shows that aren't good or you're taking so many safe bets because at the end of the day like you're the biggest company in the world the world one of like the you know one of the superpowers in capitalism in america and you can't get anybody in your company that will actually make in in you know interesting media so it's like it, it really, really is like a smack face and i kind of want to see them fail at this point because they're not willing to take those chances and you know employ people that are actually willing to make like you know yeah. and captivating forms of entertainment not only that they can't get people in who actually like the source material it seems like it's like oh we got to change everything well if you hate the source material that much why are you remaking the movie make a different movie make the movie you want to make don't take the old movie and then try and twist it into something it wasn't yeah. they're doing that they're kind of doing that with the little mermaid it's like oh we got to change all the songs oh you know because she's telling ariel that Guys don't want women who talk, and that sends a bad message. She wasn't doing that because that's how men actually feel. She's doing that to goad Ariel into giving up her voice because she wants her voice. She wants to take it from her, so she's manipulating her. It's like they're yeah, missing. Yeah, you're talking about you're talking about Ursula. Ursula. I you, yeah, I, I think you said a really good thing there, Red Guy. That there is creative, imaginative. There are creative, imaginative people out there. But I, you know, I I see it all the time in my in what I do. And I think that that's an excuse people have, Oh, you know, the world has changed and that's not the way people are. I, I disagree. I think the world is still very inspired. I just think you made a really salient point in that people don't, people are focused on the wrong thing. They're focused on safety and uh, you know, I don't want to either be canceled or I I'm focused on the money. And I think, you know, all of advancement is about taking a risk, being a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I agree with you. I hope they do burn. And then I hope they get back to what's really important. And that's just, you know, you got to, you got to believe in a stupid little, ma like who ever thought a mouse would be, you know, you got to go, you got to go for it. And the things that don't even think like there's going to be anything there. And it all started with Mortimer Mouse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you know, we went 22 over almost 23 minutes now on this that's kind of long for this one how about we get all three of us and maybe we get the maybe we get our fourth person back in too for this next discussion i think we should have a discussion on what makes a compelling character for these movies because i was really thinking about um why like puss in boots hits you know adults and kids alike you know pushes the right buttons with us and i had an idea about it and i'd like to discuss it further with you guys about like uh, emotional adult themes in these movies, as well as kid themes that they, they put in into really good movies. They just Disney just doesn't seem to be able to do that anymore. So I think we should talk about that uh, on the next one. Sounds like a good idea, but it is getting a little late. So we should wrap this up. Yeah. And wish everybody a good night. Okay. And uh, Mama, I'll see you in a few minutes. And uh, red guy it was nice having you <laughs> go get yourself some Kool-Aid maybe. <laughs> and uh, we'll all see right. y'all next time. See. Ya. Peace. See ya. Bye. No.